Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. The Open Run Pro sits at the top of the Shocks range of open ear headphones. They have improved sound quality, faster charging, and there's a new app to control them. Just to avoid any confusion, Shocks changed their name from Aftershocks just recently. These bone conduction headphones leave your ears open, delivering sound through your cheekbones to your inner ear, so you can still hear what's going on around you, which should make them perfect for running and cycling or anything else where being able to hear your surroundings is important. I've reviewed their predecessors, the Aeropex, around two years ago, and they've been my main running headphones since. Those headphones have just been replaced by the Open Run, with the only upgrade being faster charging. I'll cover them in a separate video as part of a long-term review of the Aeropex that I've used for hundreds of runs. The Open Run Pro are £160 or $180, around £30 or $50 more expensive than the non-pro version. I'll run through their features and compare how they sound to see whether it's worth paying the extra. I'll also compare them to the now entry-level Open Move I reviewed last year, which are half the price of the Open Run Pro. So let's take a closer look. In the box you get the headphones themselves, a hard case, a proprietary USB charging cable and a user guide. The case is more bulky than the silicon case included with the Aeropex and the soft pouch included with the Open Run, but offers more protection and now has somewhere to store the charging cable. The Open Move released last year moved across to a USB-C charging cable, but Shox have stuck with their proprietary magnetic charging connector for the Open Run Pro. It's the same cable that came with the Aeropex. The magnetic charging cable is convenient, but I would have preferred a standard USB-C cable. You can always find a spare USB-C cable if you run out of battery. At least with the Aeropex, Shox were kind enough to supply a spare magnetic cable. You only get one with the Open Run Pro. I thought perhaps the magnetic connector is required for waterproofing, but these headphones have the same IP55 sweatproof rating as the Open Move with their USB-C connector and are a downgrade on the Aeropex and Open Run headphones IP67 waterproof rating. I'm assuming that's due to the two vents on each transducer which are covered in a fine mesh compared to the mostly sealed Aeropex and Open Run. They're also a couple of grams heavier than the Aeropex and Open Run at just over 28 grams and just a fraction lighter than the Open Move. They do now support quick charge which will provide one and a half hours of battery life with a five minute charge. And a full charge only takes an hour, around twice as fast as the Aeropex and 30 minutes quicker than the Open Run. One new feature of the Open Run Pro that isn't advertised is a new multi-function button for controlling your music and phone calls. It's a little bigger than the button on the Open Run and Aeropex, and it sits a little more proud of the surface of the left transducer with a lighter actuation, so it's much easier to locate and use, even when running. Despite their very slightly heavier weight compared to the Open Run and Aeropex, they still feel very comfortable, and I barely notice them in use. The neck band and hook is made from titanium and feels robust. The neck band is very flexible but always returns back to its original shape. I haven't been particularly careful with my Aeropex and they're still going strong. I'm testing the blue version but they also come in black, pink and beige. The power button, which doubles as a volume up button, sits closest to your right ear. The volume down button is just behind. If you press either button with the headphones turned on and music paused, you'll get a battery level audio prompt. You can press both buttons together for 3 seconds to change EQ mode from standard mode to vocal booster mode which is more suited to podcasts and audiobooks. And you should also use this mode with earplugs. Shox used to supply some earplugs, but they don't anymore. I find using bone conduction headphones with earplugs very useful when operating loud machinery. Like all the Shox range, with the headphones turned off, you press and hold the power button for 5 seconds to pair them to your smartphone. They also pair to my Apple Watch when I occasionally leave my phone behind on a run. A single press of the multifunction button will play or pause your music or answer and end a phone call. A double press will skip to the next track and a triple press will skip back a track. Shox have just released an app on iOS and Android to configure these headphones. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with any of the other Shox headphones. This makes it far easier to change EQ mode, and you can also turn on multi-point pairing, which allows you to connect to two devices simultaneously. You can do this with the various button presses as described in the downloadable user manual, but the process is a little convoluted. In the app, you can also switch between EQ modes, check battery life, and change the audio prompt language. Although you can't turn the prompts off, and you can't configure the multi-function button, which might have been useful. I'd also like to see an auto power off setting. Currently, these headphones will remain on in standby mode until they run out of batteries. There's also the option here to upgrade firmware down the line. The Open Run Pro use Shox's Turbo Pitch technology. This is their ninth generation bone conduction technology, compared to eighth gen in their Open Run and Aeropex headphones, and seventh gen in their Open Move. They still don't sound quite as good as even inexpensive in-ear or over-ear headphones. But Shox have managed to improve their overall range, in particular bass, and the difference isn't quite so noticeable compared to more conventional headphones. It does depend on what you're listening to, 
but generally they sound more full bodied compared to the Aeropex or Open Run, and probably more importantly for me, they sound a little louder too, than most music I listen to. Shox's entry level Open Move headphones sound tinny in comparison, but the difference between Open Run and Open Run Pro is more subtle. For some tracks, I actually found better clarity in the mids with the Open Run. It's disappointing the accompanying app doesn't provide more EQ profiles or custom EQ configuration. I listen to a lot of podcasts and I'd still like them a little louder out on the bike, but for music they're okay and for running there's enough volume for both music and podcasts. At higher volumes, especially with tracks with lots of bass, the vibration can be a little uncomfortable. They feel like they're tickling your ear, which is an odd sensation. You don't notice it so much with the movement of running and cycling, but if you're sat still you could try turning on vocal booster mode, although you most likely just want to turn the volume down which you'll need to do anyway if you share an office or are using public transport, since they have major sound leakage at anything above around 60% of full volume. Like the Aeropex and Open Run, the Open Run Pro have dual noise cancelling microphones, but cool sound much clearer with these headphones, even with background noise. You can hear the difference yourselves compared to the Open Run and my AirPods Pro that have the best call quality out of the earbuds and headphones I've tested so far. This is a mic test with the Open Run Pro with no background noise. And this is how they sound with the noise of a coffee shop in the background. This is a mic test with the open run with no background noise. And this is how they sound with the noise of a coffee shop in the background. This is a mic test with the AirPods Pro with no background noise. And this is how they sound with the noise of a coffee shop in the background. Shocked quote 10 hours of battery life thanks to their larger 160 milliamp hour battery, which is two hours more than the open run and Aeropex and four hours more than the open move. They don't say at what playback volume that's at, but listening at between 60% and 100% of full volume, I didn't get far off those times. My biggest issue with battery life is forgetting to turn them off. They remain in standby mode for up to 10 days. There's no LED to warn you they're still on, and as I mentioned before, there's no auto power off setting. Hopefully that's something that can be added via a firmware update. The Open Run Pro used Bluetooth 5.1, like the Open Move and the Open Run, versus Bluetooth 5.0 with the Aeropex. And I found the Bluetooth connection reliable and the range good and there's no perceivable lip sync delay watching YouTube videos or Netflix. They don't have any support for high quality codecs like AAC or Aptex, just the standard SBC codec, but even with the improvements in audio quality, I'm still not sure you'll be able to hear any difference anyway. The improved audio quality, extra battery life, new multifunction button, phone call quality, and the accompanying app do help to justify the extra price of the Open Run Pro over the Open Run. Overall, these are the best bone conduction headphones I've tested so far. They are already my headphones of choice for running and their slight extra volume also means I'll be using them more for cycling. They fit quite nicely underneath my helmet straps and sunglasses and I can still hear music playing with wind and traffic noise. But they are a lot of money and I'm a little concerned over their drop in water resistance rating longer term. I'll provide an update in six months or so to see how they fare. The open move don't sound as good but they're half the price and have the standard USB-C connector which will be a major benefit for many. If it was between the open run and open run pro the open run, which are just the Aeropex with fast charging, still sound pretty good. Have a better IP67 waterproof rating and are a couple of grams lighter too. And I'm sure most people will be more than happy with them. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've tried bone conduction headphones, what do you think of them? Will you be upgrading to these? Let me know down below. And as always, if you have any questions, please ask. I read every comment and I'll do my best to respond. I do hope you found this video useful. Please like the video if you did. I'm releasing videos every week on the latest technology and how to get the most out of it, so please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to tap the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thanks for watching!